Salaam uh, is is born in that year. Amina uh, now is without husband. Uh, according to Amina herself, um, she actually ha saw a light so bright that uh, she could see th the Christian uh, castles of Busra, which is in Syria, uh, which is another important place. Bahira, the monk, is there. And it also comes up again in the signs of the end of time. She heard a voice say to her, you are carrying in your womb, say the al-qawm, the say of this people, the master of this people. And when he is born, say that you protect him, place him in protection of al-wahid, from the evil of every envier. Min sharri hasidin idha hasad, wa sammihi Muhammadan, and name him Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ibn Ishaq relates that. Now, she actually gives birth to him, Abdul Muttalib is overjoyed that his beloved son Abdullah, who dies, nonetheless has uh, a son. And at the same time, uh, the same uh, uh, when he married Amina's cousin uh, Hala, he also has his last son, which is Al Abbas. So this is important. Abbas is the uncle of the Prophet وسلم, but is uh, born at the same time of the Prophet وسلم. And he's a little older than the Prophet. He's just a few years older. And he actually uh, greets uh, the Prophet al-Abbas uh, in that story. So, now the Prophet وسلم, uh, is born and he's in the household of his grandfather, Abdul Muttalib. But what was the tradition of the Arabs is that they would send their children to be wet nursed by uh, Bedouin. And the reason for that is that the cities tended to be re reasonably unhealthy. I mean, if, think about now. You know, they literally considered like Mecca to be an unhealthy <laughs> environment because they said the air was not a good air. There were too many people living in it, so the Anfas uh, polluted the air. And, uh, and they felt that the sedentary life was not healthy because they didn't move a lot. Uh, they tended to be less, I mean, now people sitting all day long and things like that. You know, so you can imagine uh, the difference then. Um, anyway, what would happen is that the Bedouins would come into Mecca and women would sit with their, with their children. Now the Bedouin would look to see the powerful family because... It's important to note the Arabs have a concept of ihsan prior to Islam. And the idea was if somebody gives you a good turn, you have to give them a good turn as well as a way of mukafa'a, paying back. So it's not that they did things solely for that reason, but they recognized that that was part of their social structure. And this still to this day, like when I was in Arabia one, uh, in uh, Mauritania in the desert, one of the things I was always struck by was the generosity of the Bedouin when you would like, you'd just be traveling and come to some tents and they'd say, oh, well, let's go and, and spend the afternoon in the tents till the sun goes away. They'd sacrifice a goat for you. They'd treat you like a king and all these things. And, and I asked Abdullah one time, you know, why do they do that? I mean, what's, what's really the impetus behind it? And he says, well, what, first of all, karam, the idea of karam. It's important for him to display his generosity because it's, you know, it's from muru'ah, it's from the dignified nature of a person, and he prides himself in that, that he's kareem. But he said, but also, he's going to be in need sometime uh, as well. And so he wants, and it goes back to the golden rule, do unto others, you would have them do unto you, right? And it's the same idea, you know, is that you're going to be in need at some time, so hopefully, maybe one day, you'll end up in that person's tent, and they'll remember your ihsan to them. And so this is not really expecting immediate. Now, Abdullah did say to me also, which is interesting, he said, uh, some people will actually 
will give them something at that time just so they don't have to worry about him showing up at their door sometime. Right? So there, there really was that idea of mukafa'a. And it's in the hadith. If somebody does you a good turn, kafi'uhu. You know, then show him, uh, reciprocate his good. وَهَلْ جَزَاءُ الْإِحْسَانِ إِلَّا الْإِحْسَانِ Is the reward of showing good to people other than uh, it, the people that show good to you, that you show good to them. Or that Allah shows good to you. أَحْسَن كَمَا أَحْسَنَ اللَّهُ إِلَيْكُ Be, show ihsan to people just as Allah has shown ihsan to you. He supported you, help other people. All these things. So they had this understanding. So what happens is, now at this time another important thing to remember. Uh, this is an orphan now. Despite the fact that it's Abdul Muttalib. Abdul Muttalib is getting old. He's already in his 70s. He's, he's getting old. He is not going to be an important person. It's diminishing his authority in the Quraysh. Also, from his sons, there's no one of great distinction that is really showing these kind of leadership qualities uh, that are going to emerge. In fact, it's the Maghzumites now that are re-emerging and the Umayyads. Right? Um, now, what happens is, is that they get all these Qurayshi babies are taken by the different tribes. And Bani Sa'ad was one of the tribes that used to come down and take them. And there, Bani Sa'ad, it was a drought year. So the Arabs were having a hard time inside Mecca, but the Bedouin were also having a hard time outside. And Harima Sa'adiyya mentioned that during this time, uh, there was no kala, like uh, fodder for the livestock, so that the, the milk wasn't there. She didn't even have milk from her breast very much to give her own child who was uh, she was suckling. And she goes in hoping uh, to get a good child. They're all taken and nobody's left except the Prophet who's with Amina and he's an orphan. Right? And Amina doesn't have any money. And so Halima says to her husband, uh, who's known as Ibn Abi Kabsha, she says to her husband, as they're about to leave, you know, it's horrible that we're coming here and we came to get a child and we're going to go back without a child. And so she says, why don't we just take this orphan? Which is amazing also because her name, Halima, is somebody who like, shows you know, concern and compassion for others. So this is definitely part of her nature. So she takes uh, the baby, and Amin is pleased with this. Now, <laughs> one of the things that she said also is maybe some baraka will come from taking. In other words, there's no material gain here, but maybe we'll get some baraka, some grace from Allah if we do, because it's an act of charity. She's recognizing we're being charitable, and maybe we'll get some ihsan from Allah. So there's a pure intention here. So she takes the child. Now one of the things that happened is she had this wretched donkey that um, she rode into town with that was so emaciated it could barely move. And as they're going back with Bani Sa'ad, her donkey's ahead of all the other donkeys. And the women are saying, where'd you get that donkey from? She said, it's the same one I came with. And they said, what happened to it? You know, because they saw it, she was lagging behind. And now she's in the forefront because she had the Prophet Sallallahu And then well, the other thing she noticed is when she begins to suckle him, her breasts fill up. Right. So she's witnessing something interesting is happening here. And then when she goes in uh, back to uh, where Bani Sa'ad is from, the other thing that happens, which is extraordinary, is that she sends her goats out and they come back Full, whereas the other goats of Bani Sa'ad are coming back empty. And so they, they start telling the shepherds, go where Halima's goats are going. And they do it, but they still the same thing happens. So this Baraka is entering the house of, or the Khaimah, the tent of, of uh, Halima Sa'adi and her husband. <laughs>